Rebuilding a Stuart double 10 V steam engine part 3. Now I know that the engine is worth rebuilding and thanks to the ultrasonic cleaner for removing the old paint it is now time to dismantle the engine. This is the engine just as it came out of the ultrasonic cleaner and now in the workshop here it is sat on the bench. Basically the bottom end, the crankshaft and the bearings are fine on this engine but just about everything above the crossheads needs some attention. The first thing to go is this absolutely rubbish piece of pipe. Really, I should put it straight in the scrap bin, but no, I'm going to keep it just in case it ever comes in useful. For the moment, I'm going to put this piece of pipe in the red box with the other parts, and the parts I'm about to remove are going in this. It's a food container. These are quite useful for holding spare parts because they also have a lid. Here's a close-up shot of the two cylinders, and the first thing I'm going to do is remove the cylinder covers. I slackened off the bolts using a small spanner and now I can use the nut spinner to remove the rest. When I finally refit these cylinder covers I think I'm going to use dummy studs which are just nuts loctited onto 7BA studding. They will look much better and much more like the full size steam engine would look. Not that I've ever seen a full size Stuart 10V but you get the picture. The first cylinder cover is stuck to the cylinder and now it's not. Time to remove the other cylinder cover, and here I'm showing the spannering process. This is a Terry's 7BA spanner, and I've had it for many years. I have a few of these, and they all work very well indeed. With all the bolts finally removed using a nut spinner, this cylinder cover came off quite easily. Even though it was firmly stuck to the cylinder, it didn't take too much persuasion to leave. Before I put this engine back together, I will clean up the cylinders, but not while they're in place. I only scrape the top just to show you what I'm going to do. Once the top end of the engine is completely dismantled, I intend to paint the bottom part. And to make the painting easier and to clean up the parts, I need to remove some of the lower ones, for instance the eccentric sheaves with the eccentric straps. This particular one was reluctant to leave the crankshaft. I didn't want to use a hammer to dislodge it, I just pulled it really hard. In this clip I'm removing the steam chest cover, followed by this really poor gasket. And it's straight into the bin with that. I've ordered some new studs from Stuart Models, they should arrive in the next couple of days. And it's just as well really, look at the chunk out of the bottom stud. Whoever crudely drilled these holes to mount the flange drilled all the way through the stud, almost. Not a problem, I removed it along with all the others and put them on one side. Quite an easy job, every stud was loose and I could just unscrew them by hand. As you can see the port face is a bit of a mess, although I have seen a lot worse. It's not rusty and it will clean up using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. The food container is starting to fill up. Now it's time to remove the cylinders. These are held in place to the standards, just using four bolts in each one. Unfortunately, someone appears to have done a bit of a bodge job and fitted what looked like metric screws. I'm going to change all this. You can also see some hexagon bolts as well. Luckily, all these small machine screws came out very easily. The screwdriver I'm using is a little bit on the big side for the heads, and it's slipping out of the slot frequently. But in the end, it does the job and removes the screw. By the time I got round to filming this part, I really was hoping that these metric type bolts hadn't been forced into the existing holes. Here I'm breaking the seal between the cylinder and the part that fits to the cylinder, which was glued to it. It took a bit of pressure to remove the cylinder. Here I'm unscrewing the piston from the rod. I really wanted the rod to unscrew from the crosshead, but the piston came off. And when I tried a screwdriver on the top of this piston rod, the roughly cut cross slot just broke off. And I had to resort to a pair of pliers to unscrew the piston rod from the crosshead. These pistons are a bit of a mess. I'm going to make a new pair that takes silicone o-rings. Here's the underneath cylinder cover complete with the gland nut and everything looks okay there. Now it's time to turn the engine around and repeat the process on the other side, starting with releasing the eccentric rod from the valve fork. I then removed the steam chest, complete with the valve, and unscrewed all the studs. 
There's what looks like silicone and rubber sealant everywhere on this engine, so I'm taking no chances. I'm getting rid of it early on in the rebuild. Now I'm tackling the other cylinder, starting by taking out the metric screw, because if I leave this to the end, I'm sure it's not going to come out. Sod's Law says the last bolt that you remove is the one that causes the problems. But in this case, no, it was plain sailing. The other one came out at the other side, all right. That just leaves two hexagon bolts, and these are easy to remove. First of all, I slacken them off with a spanner, followed by unscrewing them all the way out with my nut spinner. The piston, complete with its rod, screwed out of the crosshead as one unit on this side. Now I'm about to put selected parts into my tumbler. Starting with the pair of eccentrics, complete with the sheaves. This polishing tumbler is very useful. The media that I'm using is ground-up walnut shells, which surprisingly remove an awful lot of the dirt. And with a bit of luck, after a few hours in this tumbler, the parts should look a lot cleaner. Please note, this is important, I am not putting the cylinders into the tumbler, because the media will find its way into every orifice, and could block up the threaded holes where the bolts go, as well as fill up the steamways. What I'll do, the next time I'm in the workshop, I'll start the tumbler. And I'll leave these in for a few days, and every time I'm in the workshop, just rotate it for a while. And eventually the parts should come out a lot cleaner. I'm scraping the paint off the top of the standards with a ruler. And as I'm about to repaint the bottom half of this engine, I'm blowing away any particles with my airline. Just for a change, I will be painting this engine Stuart Green. Although, I won't be using this particular pot of paint, because that's for the S50 on the steam plant that I'm building. I'll probably end up using Phoenix Precision Paints Great Western Railways Green, which is near enough for rock and roll. After a very light oiling of the moving parts, I thought that now would be a good time to fit the lubricators. These are three of the modified ones that I originally fitted to the triple expansion engine. They're very easy to fill with oil and they hold a lot of oil, which is very good for the crankshaft bearings. I'm being very careful not to get any oil on the cast iron parts that I'm going to paint. I thought I would rotate the engine with my electric drill, just to see how it feels. And to be honest, it feels really well, it's hardly worn, and this part of the engine is very well made indeed. I think the next episode needs to be a painting video. I never use primer on cast iron parts, I find that the paint sticks perfectly well to the cast iron surface. I'm also going to paint every one of the bolt heads on the lower part of the engine to prevent them from rusting. And that is it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.